Hi! In this video, we will take a look at a RSA Secure ID token, and I will attempt to take it apart and see what's inside. Uh, the reason I said attempt is that these devices were not designed to be taken apart, and I think the main reason for this is to prevent any reverse engineering efforts. I did a teardown of an earlier version of the uh, RSA Secure ID token many years ago, and you can see some of the teardown pictures on my website. And in that teardown, you could see that everything in this uh, security, in that security ID, is conformal coded and then potted, so that the chance of uh, having a um, functional circuit after taking it apart is virtually nil. But in just a little bit, we will give it another go and uh, on this newer version of the secure ID to see if there's anything interesting inside. For those who do not know what an RSA Secure ID is and how it works, I would recommend you checking out the Wikipedia page for the RSA Secure ID. But from a very high level, the RSA Secure ID token is simply a pseudo random number generator that was seeded with a specific seed value when the device was initially assigned to a person. And from that seed and the internal clock of this um, uh, Secure ID, a predetermined sequence of pseudo random numbers is generated and displayed at an interval of say 60 every 60 seconds. The idea is that when authenticating to a system, the user would use a pseudo code, uh, sorry, use a passcode followed by a random number displayed at the moment on the RSA secure ID. And on the server side, the server will try to match the password using the passcode and random number generated on the secure ID via the initial seed value and the synchronized clock on the server. So basically the pseudo random number sequence on the server and that on this device are identical for a given seed value. So now of course there are some logistics that need to be taken care of in practice such as clock drift since uh, the device's clock and the server's clocks are running uh, freely independently. They will need to be synchronized through some algorithms and uh, once a while as during the course of several years which is the lifespan of these tokens. I think these one, uh, I'm not sure how long the lifespan of this is but uh, probably three years if I remember correctly. Anyway, so that is the lifespan of tokens. Uh, the clock During that lifespan the clock drift could be significant. So anyway, this uh, token has already expired at the end of last year, December. So there's no number displayed at the moment on the screen. And uh, that's basically uh, how all the RSA Secure ID works. So now let me attempt to open it up and we'll go from there. Okay, it's not that bad. I just used the Dremel to uh, cut uh, the edges around, as you can see here. It's not pretty, but I think right now we can at least open this up. Uh, hang on. So the first thing you see is this battery, which is uh, uh, it's not surprising given the shape here, is uh, this single battery is powering this entire unit for the duration of uh, uh, the lifespan of this uh, secure token. And there's not much we can see besides this uh, LCD up here, so we'll have to take it apart a little further and uh, hopefully we can see a little bit more. And if you recall in my previous Secure ID teardown and that secure ID actually you can see a lot more circuitry just by opening it up But this one unfortunately uh, this whole thing is actually still uh, either potted or it's a, uh, a Hard cover, but we'll find out later. So let me work on it a little more and I will come back And now I just removed the total uh, the outer case altogether and uh, in fact this thing is still encased in this uh, hard plastic uh, well it's not actually plastic it's kind of a softy uh, I'm not sure whether this is actually but anyway so it's still inside here so we will have to take it apart further but right now you can already see uh, this is the back of the unit you can see this uh, test pass here so I suppose these are the ones actually not test pass but these are used as a programmer uh, to programming port so uh, presumably it was the first mate and then uh, using these uh, 
test pads, they can program this device to a predetermined seat value. So we will have to take it apart a little bit more. Unfortunately, this is going to be a little harder because this material is, uh, um, I'm not sure what it is, but it's a little hard to uh, remove. Well, I'll see what I can do and we'll, we'll go from there. Actually, before I uh, take it apart, I want to I don't want to make sure I just I can measure the uh, the voltage right now because I'm afraid that uh, in the process of taking it apart we're going to damage the circuit and we won't be able to do any meaningful measurement. At least right now the battery I can see is it has a hole on the top and a hole at the bottom, so presumably you can measure the uh, the voltage right now. So let me do that and see what the voltage it is. And uh, let's see. So let's. Uh, Set to volt, and uh, let me uh, hook this here. Uh, oh no, this is silly me. So here we go. So it's still 3.0 volts. So um, let me just try again. Yep. So which means after you know. So, so this battery really it's uh, more than sufficient. I'm guessing the current is very a uh, very small. The current draw is very low, so that after these years, um, you know, the battery is not uh, down that much. And yep, as I expected, this is very difficult to peel away. And it's surprisingly slightly easier than the previous version as, uh, you know, these things are, um, I'm, it's not very sticky. I'm not sure exactly what this is, but it's a little soft and not as soft as a silicone kind of uh, uh, epoxy. But uh, it's uh, harder than, um, than your plastic. Well, sorry, it's, it's uh, not as hard as your plastic. And it's very, it's pretty much impossible to dremel this thing because it just falls into a, uh, uh, tiny dust, but anyway, so I was starting to you know taking peeling this away and I noticed like I, I'm not sure at what point this was triggered. I don't know if it's a uh, uh, Protection mechanism, you know as soon as it detects somehow something it's uh, peeled away um, It basically just uh, you know reset or something like that, but I don't know So anyway, so right now as you can see before we only had the three at the bottom uh, displaying and right now this whole thing uh, is flashing. So I'm gonna keep working on it till, um, to see what we can get. And hopefully we won't destroy it too much that we can still do some measurements afterwards. I'm working on this little by little and uh, I just removed this uh, cover of the, uh, the LCD. Now, it's pretty apparent to me that uh, I don't think there's any chance I can uh, take this whole thing a part in one piece as it's extremely difficult to uh, to work this uh, material but uh, I think this is uh, probably the last time you're gonna see this uh, uh, thing still flashing um, and what I did notice is uh, you know as I was peeling this away there's a some uh, the board let's see here let me just uh, uh, let it focus so you can see it's a revision H. So it's probably have gone through many different revisions of this board. But um, um, compared to the previous uh, version, uh, if you recall, which I will link some images, well, you can actually go to my website to see the previous teardown, that the chip is actually mounted on the board. Whereas this thing, I think the whole thing is sandwiched behind this uh, um, LCD in order to get to the uh, the guts you pretty much have to you know destroy this whole thing so which is probably what we're gonna do next by the way I didn't uh, take any footage of me uh, trying to take this apart it's just uh, you know it's really nothing interesting it's all the mechanical part and uh, so I I'm just wanna I just wanna keep uh, the video uh, rather compact so you can see the most interesting part 
So now the battery has come off and you can see there's some damage to the LCD. Uh, that's unfortunately unavoidable. Uh, before I crack this open, and I think that's the only way we can see what is underneath, we will take a look at the, uh, the serial number one more time. So in case we can find something later. So here is our serial number. Let's see. Uh, can't really focus that well, unfortunately. Anyway, so that's a uh, 7009 and there were five zeros and a one revision H. Okay. So I just uh, removed this uh, LCD brute force and now it's totally damaged but uh, we can see actually what is underneath uh, the LCD. Actually, you know, everything now it's it's in this uh, big epoxy blob. That's where uh, the magic is happening. But that's probably just a microchip inside and uh, with the embed algorithm and uh, embed EEPROM e -prom, to store the seed information. But as you can see, the real-time clock crystal is right here. Uh, so that's where the real-time clock. Uh, I haven't uh, removed that piece of epoxy yet, but uh, it's right here. That's the uh, the clock. So I'm afraid that's uh, pretty much everything uh, is there to it. And um, compared to the previous version of the RSA Secure ID, uh, you can see the integration level is much higher, and which means it's more the difficult to reverse engineer and uh, do any meaningful measurement of this thing because this whole thing essentially is kind of potted. Uh, on top of the chip. So there's really no way for you to uh, mess around with it unless you damage uh, this. By the way, it's Im almost impossible to desolder this because this whole thing is a uh, uh, kind of glued, if you will. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a glue or it's the same epoxy material, but uh, this whole thing is just one piece. So there really isn't any way for me to, uh, do non -de to take it apart non-destructively. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you learned something new, please uh, give me a big thumbs up, and I'll catch up with you next time.